guys, this video is my YouTube made me buy it tag. Kathleen Lights did this video a while back and she made it into a tag. I'm not sure if it originated somewhere else, but I got my idea for this video from her video. She basically took all the products that she bought because YouTubers were recommending them. So I have a ton of makeup that I bought pretty much just because I heard about it through YouTube. So I'm gonna share with you all of the products that YouTube has made me buy and whether or not I actually thought they were worth it. Also, my voice is really rough today. I know I'm sick, but we're just gonna power through this video. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm gonna start off with some tools and uh, if I pull this out, I don't know one person who can't tell me what this is. This is a beauty blender. And I feel like everybody and their mother has been talking about the beauty blender. Everybody has a beauty blender. It's like the thing to apply makeup with. And it does apply your makeup wonderfully. So I bought this and it's $20. So it is super up there in price, I'd say. But another thing that YouTube made me buy, which I actually did a whole video about these, and that's the Real Technique sponges. Now these are a lot more affordable than the Beauty Blender. I believe they're $6. This is 20, so 6, 20. And guess what? I've been using this nonstop since I found these sponges and I haven't picked up my beauty blender even once. So I honestly like how the Real Technique sponges apply makeup better than the beauty blender and you also are saving like $14. So overall, I do like the beauty blender but I definitely recommend the Real Technique sponges even more. Next for tools, I'm gonna say Morphe brushes. Now I hear, again, everybody and their mother talking about Morphe brushes. So I went online and I purchased a bunch of Morphe brushes. I do really like them, um, but I actually have a powder brush where the brush part broke off of the bottom, so I know I can glue it back together. I don't know, I feel like uh, I haven't had it for even maybe like two months and the top already broke off, so I like them. I like the way they apply products. I don't know if they're my favorite brushes of all time, but they are super affordable depending on which ones you get, so I do really appreciate that. So overall, I would say Morphe brushes are worth it. The next products I'm gonna talk about are concealer. Uh, this is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer, and again, so many people are talking about this. I know Tati loves this. I've actually been using this before YouTube, so I guess it's technically not a YouTube made me buy it, but I hadn't used this in a really long time, and I went out and bought a new one when I heard all of these YouTubers raving about it. So I do overall really like it, although my dark circles are kind of too dark for this. I do think this is a good product. It does increase. I'm not sure about their shade selection. Overall, I would say worth it. It's inexpensive and it does do the job if your circles are not absolutely horrendous like mine are. The next concealer, Tarte Shape Tape. If you watch YouTube, can you just name like one YouTuber who hasn't absolutely shilled this product yet? And I mean, I don't blame them. I do really like this product, although I got shade matched at the Tarte booth at Jen Beauty and she completely gave me a shade that was way too light for my skin tone. So I've been using this as a highlighting concealer. It doesn't crease. It has a kind of a clean scent to it. It has a big doe foot applicator, but you really do not need a lot with this. A little bit goes a long way. So I would say that I do like this product, but I don't think that there should be as much hype around it as there is. The next product is the Cover FX Custom Cover Drops. I've heard uh, Rich Loves talking about this, but a lot of other YouTubers use this. These are basically super concentrated pigment drops, um, so you can mix this into sunscreen, into moisturizer, and kind of make your own BB cream with it, although they're super expensive. So I do think it's worth it, especially during the summer. These are great for adding into your sunscreen to give yourself a little bit more protection. So I do think it is on the pricey side. I bought this discounted at Generation Beauty, um, so I would pay the 28, 20 something ish dollars that I paid for it, but I think it's like around 40. So that is a little bit high for me to purchase this again. The next product is Max, Max, Max. The next product is Mac Fix Plus, and this is a prep and prime mineral infused, vitamin infused water. I've heard people talking about this for literally 
forever. But I went out and I purchased this because none of the setting sprays that I had worked to intensify the pigment. They set your makeup wonderfully, but they were a little bit too sticky in the fact that I would spray it on my brush, dip my brush into the shadow, and it would leave this weird film on the shadow. So I wanted to get something that I knew would work since everybody was talking about it. And I do really like this. This was about $20, $25, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but you do get a lot of product in here, so I would say this is definitely worth it. Moving on, we have the Butter Bronzer by Physicians Formula. If you watch Kathleen Lights, she talks about this all the time. This product is from the drugstore, but it is definitely up there in price. It was about $15, which for me, if I'm going to the drugstore, I don't expect to spend that on a bronzer. It smells like sunscreen and like tropicalness, so it kind of, I guess, tries to remind you as if you're in some vacation world. But as even Kathleen said, uh, if you do use this a lot, the scent kind of starts to get a little bit sickening. But overall, I love the packaging. I think since you are paying a bit more, um, the packaging should be nicer and it is nicer. The bronzer itself is, as it says, it's very buttery and it gives a much more natural finish to the skin than a lot of other bronzers I've tried. Uh, it does have a perfect undertone for my skin. I guess what I'm saying is it's a little bit pricey for the fact that it's drugstore, but it does have a really good formula. I do like the scent on occasion and the packaging is really nice. So I do like that I purchased this product because I do use it pretty often. The next product I'm sure you all know about if you watch YouTube at all, and that is the Milani Baked Blush in the shade Luminoso. Everybody was talking about this a couple months ago. It was sold out in a ton of places. I think this was about $8, uh, so it wasn't super expensive. And I really like the packaging. The whole packaging is gold. This blush is a very peachy blush, but it also has a super, like, shiny sheen to it. I don't know what to call it. So it does leave a little bit of glow on your skin. I'm wearing it right now. I was getting super sick of like really red toned and hot pink toned blushes. And I really didn't own any peach shades before this. And I feel like peach just suits my skin tone and the eye looks and lip looks that I like to go with the best. So I am very happy I purchased this. This is my go-to blush now and uh, definitely worth it for $8. The next products I'm gonna talk about are highlighters. Recognize these? Well, this one is the Becca and Jaclyn Hill Champagne Pop. And obviously YouTube made me buy this because this is a collab with the YouTuber Jaclyn Hill. Um, this was super up there in price. I usually would never spend that on a highlighter. I mean, I like highlight, but I don't like highlight that much. It's a nice gold toned highlighter. I would say this is definitely more like summery. I don't usually wear gold tones and you know warm tone highlighters in the winter time. So I would say for the price, not worth it just because maybe I don't like to spend that much money on highlighters. But if you are looking for a nice gold toned highlighter, I would say this is a good one as long as you don't mind uh, the price tag. The next highlighter, this is literally made out of my nightmares. This is Joey's highlighter in Citrine. For any of you who follow the YouTubers on Snapchat, you saw that Joey brought them on a big Paris trip to promote their launch of their new highlighters and new lipsticks. This was one of the highlighters that came out. It looks so nasty. So I actually made a whole video about my horrible experience with Joey and Dermstar when I ordered these, but I never ended up editing it and posting it just because it was kind of really negative and I hate posting negative things. I ordered this from Derm Store because Joey's website was having massive problems when this launched and I went to Derm Store because Joey recommended on their Instagram that we go to Derm Store. I bought the highlighter and then a day later I get notified that my product was put on back order and then it might ship in like three weeks and I was really upset because when I went back to Joey's Instagram to tell them that Derm Store is back ordering products, Joey had deleted that you should go to Derm Store in order to, to get the products. So I have no problem if, I don't know, something happens with the launch, but Joey basically lied about saying that they 
recommended Derm Store because they deleted it off of their Instagram. And I thought that was in really bad taste. And then on top of it, almost everyone who got their highlighters got shattered highlighters. So that's what happened to me. So this came completely shattered. So many other people's products, including Jaclyn Hill's highlighters from them came shattered. They did not package them correctly. And I just thought that they didn't handle it very well overall. So I regret purchasing it just because of the hard experience that I had. But the highlighter itself is pretty. It's obviously never gonna be the same as it was. I did put alcohol and such in here in order to meld it back together. So that's the highlighter itself. It is a really pretty highlighter. YouTubers were raving about this on Snapchat. I just have a really bad taste in my mouth from the experience that I had while ordering it. So do I regret purchasing it? Yeah. So I have a few more products before I get into palettes. Um, and this, uh, going along with the Jouer, I ordered this at the same time uh, as I did the highlighters. This is their liquid lipstick in the shade Snapdragon. I also bought Bronze Rose. The pigmentation is really great. They feel really nice on your lips. They feel pretty light on your lips. While I was not a huge fan of the highlighters, I do not regret purchasing uh, these liquid lipsticks. I actually really, really like them. The next product that YouTube made me buy is kind of like a whole collection of products, and they are the ColourPop shadows. So I bought a whole bunch of these because a lot of people were talking about ColourPop. Kathleen Lights did a collab with ColourPop. They were kind of all over my YouTube timeline, if you will. So I bought a bunch of their shadows. I do find that their shadows are a bit creamier than a lot of other formulas. They're very inexpensive. They do have nice pigmentation, but I find that they apply best with your fingers. I also purchased a bunch of the ColourPop Ultra Matte Lips, and I hate them. I'm sorry. ColourPop or anyone who likes the ultra matte lips, but they are so drying on my lips It feels like I am actually in the desert while they're really inexpensive I bought a lot of them expecting them to be like my new favorite and I just I can't I can't get past how dry they are It's like when your hands are super dry and they feel like chalky and uncomfortable That's what it feels like on your lips. So th that one gets a big no. The next product I have was actually recommended by um, 11th Gorgeous, and this is the Rimmel Scandalize Mascara in Retro Glam. Uh, they said that this was a dupe for the Better Than Sex Mascara by Too Faced. While I don't own that one, I have a sample of it, and the wands are very similar. Oh yeah, let me put it in front of my black shirt so you can't see. The wands are very similar where they're thinner in the middle and bigger on the ends. And this has been my go-to mascara literally every time I put on mascara. It makes my lashes look so long, so voluminous, so gorgeous. And this is only $7. I have it on my lashes right now. I don't know if you could tell. My lashes are very, very, very straight and flat and just not great. I think that it really does a lot for my lashes. If you saw me without mascara, you'd understand. So now that I am done with all those products, I have a whole bunch of palettes to go through. So the first one I'm going to talk about is all three palettes from Juvia's Place. So obviously if you watch YouTube, Juvia's Place is all over the place. They were involved in conspiracy theories and customer service issues, all those things. Um, I ordered all three of these, they arrived in a timely manner, nothing was broken, I didn't have any issues, they're super inexpensive. So I was pumped about all that, I didn't have any issues with them. Um, and also these shades are incredibly pigmented. Uh, if you wanna see more in depth about this, I do have a video just about the Juvia's Place palettes. But basically you get a lot of really great shades, some neutrals with some pops of color. They're insanely pigmented. They blend out really easily, but they don't sheer out. I really, really, really love the formula on these. Giza, the shade in the Masquerade palette right here. This is my go-to inner corner highlight color. I mean, it is perfect for an inner corner highlight. These are so pigmented and I love them. The next thing YouTube made me buy is Too Faced Power Makeup, and this was a collab with Nikki Tutorials, so obviously YouTube made me buy it because it's a YouTuber collab. It smells like chocolate, which is really cool. I'm gonna be honest, I don't wanna be mean, but I'm gonna be honest, I do regret purchasing this. For one, the bronzer, this is not a contour powder, so I would use this with a bronzing brush. 
it is definitely not a big enough pan for that and if I do put a big brush in there it's gonna get some of the blush and highlight in it also the highlight I feel like for how much Nikki loves bright blinding highlights this highlight just isn't really pigmented whatsoever and you can't even really see it and then on top of that the shades aren't very pigmented for example this black shade um, it kind of is a little bit sheer it's a bit patchy the purple shade is again a bit sheer and not very good so I hate to say it but I do regret purchasing this I think this was about $54 and it came with a few other things but I literally never reach for this palette, gonna be honest. The next thing that YouTube made me buy is the Jouer Essential Matte and Shimmers palette. So this is a palette that came out right after all of Jouer's highlights and lip liquid lipsticks came out. They announced it during the Paris trip. And I actually never heard about this on YouTube after that. It was crazy. It kind of just dropped off the face of the earth. And to be honest, that was super weird to me because I bought it early at Generation Beauty and this is my go-to fall palette. The shades are so pigmented, so gorgeous. They blend out so well. They're just such great shades for fall. I love this palette. This is like the best palette for fall. I just overall really, really like it. And it kind of just dropped off the face of the earth after they announced it. So uh, I don't know what happened, but I really like this. And the last product that I have here is the Metal Matte Palette by Kat Von D. Uh, the artwork on the front is artwork that she did. It says metal, you flip it over, it says matte. I think that's so cool, she's very talented. And this palette is huge. I mean, this is, retails for $60, but I got it during friends and family for 48. And you do get a ton of shades in here. I'm wearing it on my eyes right now. These are just really, really creamy, blendable shades. I know those are super generic words, but I love this palette. I just got it recently, so I don't want to dish about it too much before I've had time to try it. But Suede is a perfect transition shade for me. The metals in here are also very pigmented. A few of them are chunky, like tinsel, but they still work really well. They just have a bit more fallout. But overall, I really love this palette. I'm glad I purchased it. I'm going to be doing a few tutorials on this very soon. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the YouTube Maybe Buy It tag. So let me know in the comments if you guys have any of these products and what you think about them. I challenge all of you to do the YouTube Maybe Buy It tag because I am sure that YouTube has made you buy a lot of stuff that you didn't originally plan on buying. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. I hope to see you guys all in my next video.